oh, hey man, why don't you come check out some of the bikes we got upstairs, they're real cool. The illustrious break room. Uh, spend a lot of time up here doing whatever. Uh, the cool thing about the break room is every single bike that's in here was either hand built by Tom or passed through his hands one way or another. So why don't we show you around to some of them. Probably the most notable bike that we have is this Rwanda bike. A uh, big story of Tom's is going to Rwanda, meeting the coffee growers there and just being super impressed with their bikes. He was able to bring one back. You can see it's very rudimentary. It has two wheels. Cool thing about it is the steering system. So they use tires for not only suspension, but to help aid the steering because they're carrying hundreds and hundreds of pounds of coffee on their bike. Really kind of a cool setup. Amazing what you can do with next to no technology. So we'll start off this is bike number one. The first bike that Tom ever built was actually for his dad. This bike is so awesome for a hand-built steel bike. It's insanely light, crazy details from the cable guide to the Mayfac brakes. Uh, I could go on and on about everything that's on here. None of the components match, but all of the components are sick in and of themselves. The semi-integrated seat mast with the super early on mono beam saddle, really kind of cool stuff. Uh, and he made it when he was like 15 or 16. So I can tell you I wasn't doing anything that cool when I was that age. Uh, bike number two that we have, this is actually a respray. And some of the cool things that you'll see are kind of the early onset of the fastback kind of notion. So you have the stay coming into here, but the way that's bolted through to secure the post. It's a lugged frame, kind of key to the Richie story is that all of his bikes were Philip raised and this one was lugged. He actually built a few frames for Palo Alto that were lugged. His rationale behind those lugged frames for Palo Alto was it was so easy to build a lugged frame quickly. This one has some really cool details in the fork where these long bladed ends, but the fact that the crown is just very elegantly done. Next most notable bikes that we have is this early 650B, what Tom would have called a cow trail bike. This is one of the bikes that started it all for mountain bike. Uh, this is one of three, I believe. 650B wheels, high clearance, really kind of a cool bike. When you compare the geometry of a bike like this to today, the numbers are very similar, so there's not much different about it. Some of the cool features about it, something that they called the park bench, this massive fillet in here, increased stiffness, but it's only in the drive area. So the rest of the bike would have ridden really well. Just immaculate. Another bike that's super cool is this bike that was made for Eric Hayden. Eric was on the 7-Eleven team. At that time, all the bikes, even though their sponsor was Murray, was made by Sirota. And this is the only non-Sirota built Murray that was on the team. Super cool, a lot of Richie signatures to it from the fillet braze to the fastback stay. This really cool lug up in here for the seat tube, the threadless stem, full campy group. You can't get any more classic than that. Some other really awesome bikes that we're, I'm always nerding out on are our two world champion bikes. The top one belonging to Ruthie Mathis and the bottom one belonging to Heinrich Jernis. Both bikes won worlds and really fought against all of the trends that were happening in the mountain bike industry at the time. Almost everyone at that time was riding a suspension front fork, which only had about 80 mil of travel. So Tom wasn't an adopter of that early suspension because there's so little give to them. So all these bikes were fully rigid. Heinrich, you can see, rode a suspension stem. Another couple bikes I like to compare to each other are these two camo painted bikes. Both of these bikes were painted by Rick Stefani out in D&D Cycles in San Leandro, but probably about 30 years apart. The top bike is an early Commando, features the Bull Moose Bar, full Dior XT group, the Shark Fin, kind of an anti-drop chain catcher. The funny thing about the 90s or 80s, I should say, was you'd see all kinds of weird little things like that popping up on mountain bikes. The category was so fresh, there's so many things to do in that era. The story behind it is, it was a request from what Tom calls Northern California farmers. 
so they could be discreet on their bicycles. This bike's super cool. It would have been rigged out for full fenders. Really awesome off-road bike. Two of my favorite bikes are over here. They're right by the door, so I get to see them a lot. Top one being a track bike that Tom built for himself. Really cool biplane fork, fillet braised, very straightforward track bike. It rides exactly like a track bike should, very steep angles. He said he made it specifically just to ride it hellier. He was signed up for a few pursuits. Of the frames I know that Tom has built, he built very few track bikes, most notably one for Chris Haley, who was a local racer and a real phenom in crits and track and maybe a few more are out there for local racers. The other bike that I really like is the Swiss Cross that was built by Tom. We had this hand painted again by Rick Stefani. This bike was made for NABs, full Super Logic on it, Apex 88 wheels, our WCS Shield tires, and Force One group on it. This would be a badass bike to show up to a race on. Um, really, really spectacular bike to just nerd out on whenever I'm eating a sandwich. And there you go, those are the bikes of the break room at Richie Design.